Okay. Just okay. let's take a deep breath. <laughs> Janoya, thank you. Thank first you. of all. I'll start with you and we'll bring in Danielle and Whoopi. Um, I was having a conversation. Well, first of all, congratulations on your world premiere. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> I was having a conversation recently with Alana Mayo, who runs Orion Pictures, and somewhere Woo! in the audience, yes. where's Alana? Um, and and we were talking about how this project, how this film came about, and she told me about, and I want to ask you to to elaborate. She told me about an early conversation that the two of you had. You had a very specific approach, idea, a creative instinct about how you wanted to tell this story and why. So why don't we start there as a way to kind of open up the conversation a bit. For sure. Um, the first and most important kind of non-negotiable I had in my approach to make this film, and this is what I shared with the producers when they first approached me three years ago mm -hmm. about making this film, is that the story had to be told from the perspective of Mamie. And we had to follow so closely her emotional journey. For without Mamie, the world, we wouldn't know who Emmett Till was. And so she is the heartbeat, the foundation of the story. So that was the first thing. I also knew that I did not want to show any physical violence inflicted upon black bodies on screen. Mm. Um, yeah. mm. And so that was for a myriad reasons, but one of them, narratively speaking, since our, we're following Mamie's journey, it's not necessary to see that physical violence. We're not, because it, it's, it's, we have to stay with Mamie. Also, you know, as a black person, I didn't want to recreate it. I didn't want to shoot it. I didn't want to watch it. And I didn't want, and I wanted to take care of audiences um, who were watching it, particularly black audiences. Um, and then also I really wanted to begin and end the film with joy and love. Because in addition to this film being about Mamie's story and her journey, this is also a love story between Mamie and her child, Emmett. And so all, yes, thank you. And so all of that informed my initial approach in how I wanted to tell this story. Um, and then once, and then my later conversations with Alana and the rest of the incredible studio, I just, cannot say enough how incredible it has been working with MGM, Orion Pictures, um, but I, they, were re they gave me full creative autonomy to develop a rich visual language um, with my incredible cinematographer, Bobby Bukowski, and all of the, t yes. <laughs> that would use, I, would, I was able to use all of the tools of cinema, right, to center the black gaze, the black POV, particularly that of a black woman, to visually and uh, to use the tools of cinema to visually communicate to, uh, the, the richness, the vibrancy of black people, black communities, black spaces, and put them in a position of power visually using cinematic language. And once I explained this vision to Alana and the rest of the team, they were totally on board and gave me full reign to execute that vision. <laughs> I'm just going to underline what you said because it's, it's not just what you intentionally chose not to show, but it's how you showed what you did choose. Exactly. It's that cinematic language that you chose to, to highlight that which you wished to, put a, to shine a light on, to put your camera on. Exactly, because it's important what's not in the frame and what's in the frame, yes. right? And it's, you suggest a part of cinema is suggesting the world beyond the frame, but where the camera focuses is its own act of resistance, particularly in this film. And so I was very intentional about who we see and when. Where the camera focuses is, is its own act of resistance. I'm gonna sit with that, thank you. Thank you. Um, Whoopi Goldberg, hello and welcome to the New York Film Festival. Thank you. Nice to be here finally. <laughs> we're, thrilled, we're thrilled to finally have you on our stage yeah. at this moment. So thank you for thank you. sharing this with us. And, and if you don't mind sharing a little bit of, of your own passion for this story, 
what it was about this film at this moment that brought it all together for you, putting your, your muscle behind it? Well, uh, <laughs> the people who really sort of started this journey is Keith Beauchamp. Where's Keith? Keith is here. Keith, please stand up. Michael, please stand up. Michael. Where are Fred and Barbara? Barbara Broccoli and Fred Zolo. Somewhere up. <laughs> this was them. And they called and said, hey, this is what we're trying to do. Do you want to be part of this? And I said, yeah, sure, yeah. You know, because this is a story I've known all my life. This is the year I was born. So this I've always known, and my family's always known, and you know, you listen to people talk and they throw the name around as if they are, have a relationship to it. But then I, when I met Keith, and he laid out what really was going on and how it was going on, I thought, okay, I, I would like to be part of this because nobody knows this story. Nobody knows the story, and we know pictures. We've seen pictures, we've seen the magazines, but suddenly there's life and breath in this family, and they're moving and they're alive, and that is a lot because of what we know through Keith, you know? And so I, you know, so we, we tried for a long time. We tried for a long time, went through several different parameters, excuse me, of who I got candy in my mouth. Because <laughs> my breath was quite bad. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, the nation came to a reckoning. And suddenly, people wanted to tell our stories. And so the step up, was magnificent, and then when we found Danielle, mm. it was like, <gasps> you know, and first we found Chinoya, okay? Okay, <laughs> first we found Chinoya, but. And she said everything that she didn't know we wanted, but it was what she wanted too, and it was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer, and then, this is, this is the woman. <laughs> and now you know, you know, no, no now you know. Mm. You know what institutionalized racism looks like, and you can, connected to your own life. Maybe you're a gay person, maybe you're a woman, maybe you're an Asian person. You all understand this hatred because it's coming closer and closer. Well, what we see on that screen is the culmination of what systematic racism looks like. It goes out in ripples, and it touches everybody. And the whole point of all of this is we've seen it, we know, we saw George Floyd, we saw Trayvon Martin. Children and young men, middle-aged men, men, people. This is your way of saying, I don't like what I see up there. And doing something about it. Danielle, first, congratulations. Thank you. Danielle, we're in the presence, even in this moment, of so many women, mothers, who have 
sacrifice, not by their own choice, for this ongoing struggle. Um, maybe help us understand how you ground yourself in that reality as you are embarking on how you will portray this legendary figure that we're now learning so much more about. Mm -hmm. How you thought about that, how you think about that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to ground. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no ability to, um, mm -hmm. to be wholly firm mm -hmm. and fully erect, right, truly. Um, it's a resistance to wanting to do this thing because you don't want to do this thing because you want what was before. Um, and that's what you're fighting. There's a chasm in wanting to, to do the fight and, a chas and, and wanting to have what, what you can no longer have. Um, I'm a mother of a soon to be 13 year old myself. Uh, I didn't want to do it on that account, you know? Um, it's not something that you're able to relinquish at all. It's not another movie. Um, it's an ongoing experience. And as a child of civil rights, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, as a child of Cascade United Methodist Church, where Dr. Joseph Lowry was the pastor when I was a kid, who was a collaborator with Dr. King, and they created the SELC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, where I volunteered as a youth along with all of my siblings. And this has been the, this has been my root. This has been the rearing of me as a, as a, as a person. Um, I come with that. I come to it with that understanding, with that history, with that DNA. Mm. And I come to it with that regard and honor and respect. So when I, when I, when I understand that, that this is what I've been <laughs> prepared for, um, you are no longer able to, to turn away. Um, and so I move forward with that honor, um, with that um, understanding of what courage looks like. Mm. Uh, this film begins its journey today. This morning it played for press and industry. You had a press conference to talk about it tonight, the world premiere. Tomorrow there will be a screening, and I hope you will share. There's some a few tickets left if you'll share it with a friend or a family member who wants to come see it tomorrow morning. And then on Monday we're going to show it in this theater to kids from all around New York City, and we're going to share that conversation <laughs> from this stage to art house theaters with kids in multiple parts of this country on Monday at noon. So while we have to pause the conversation here, it's going to continue this weekend and on Monday. And it will continue because everyone who was here and had the opportunity to be the first to see it together can take it out and share and invite others to engage with this movie. Again, it starts today and it continues. So I just want to thank these, uh, these three women um, and everyone behind the film who is in the audience with us. Thank you for sharing it with us and for spending some time with us to talk about it tonight. Thank you. Thank you.